Rajban story. <coughs> Hair in the gate. <laughs> this is Rajban's story. It's a wonderful story about little Rajban and he meets the love of his life, Rose Patel. Oh, farewell, old Hoban. Bye bye, Mary. Wave Rajban. Until next season, my lad. Winter well and take good care, called old Hoban. Rajban and Ellie the elephant boarded the jumbo jet and with a whoosh and a roar, they were away, disappearing into a candy floss sky eastwards to Bengal. India was home for little Rajban. Joyfully, he was reunited with his mama dam and papa dam, who listened fascinated by the little Chapati's story of Bunbury battles won on the cricket field. Rajban marvelled at the sights of India, the explosive carmine of the turbans, whole cities painted rose pink, the gold on the ankles and waists of dancers twirling their skills, sequins starring their brows, amber around their necks. He loved to sit with the wise men from the mountains, mystics, chiefs of wizardry and masters of astrology. And while his master consulted the Maharajban, Ellie linked up with her chums and together they were dazzling to behold. Their ears were painted with vermilion and cinnabar, their tusks shone white, their bodies tinted in bright colours as they lolloped along the road a maze of trunks, legs and tails. Early one morning, Rajban skipped through the bazaars, absorbing their dusty pleasures, running past the vendors selling their scarlet silks, the scent of jasmine and musk suffused his senses, leaving him oblivious to his surroundings. Crash! He bumped into what appeared to be a sack. Oh, I'm most sorry, apologised little Rajban, standing over a street urchin. Wake up, wake up, he appealed, uncovering a face hidden by a silken veil. It was the face of a young girl. As Rajban cupped her head in his hands, two deep brown eyes gazed up at him. Her delicately combed hair shone under the silk and Rajban was captivated by this beautiful vision dressed in rags, clasping a red rose to her chest. He felt a fire burning in his tummy and a tingle in his heart. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going, he stuttered. The girl got to her feet with a look of terror on her face. Please forget me. It will only bring you sadness. There is danger ahead. And before Rajban could reply, she pressed the rose into his hand, then turned and vanished into the hurly-burly of the market. For some moments, Rajban stood stunned, staring at the rose. He was still dazed when he sought the advice of his Maharajban. But Master, she was so beautiful, so beautiful. Now you must listen to me, my little one. This is no ordinary girl. I have seen it in the divine light. She is the daughter of the Catman of Kathmandu. Who is the Catman? inquired Rajban. The little bunny sat in a lotus position, listening avidly as the wise man unfurled his story. Oh, Rajban, he is a terrible cat who lives in the evil palace of the winds. Surrounded by his Bengal tigers, he terrorizes the Himalayan people. The story goes that he always wanted a son to continue his tyranny, but his wife gave birth to a daughter. He immediately disowned the baby and his wife was never seen again. Oh, dearie me. And what of her name, required Rajban. Her name is Rose Patel, and she is always to be seen holding a rose, answered the Maharajban. Oh, dearie me, this story saddens me greatly, said little Rajban. You must try and ease her from your mind, continued the Maharajban. For although the temptation to see her is great, it can only bring you pain. Now go, my little one, and forget what has happened. When Rajman had left, the wise old man walked to his window, and outside there was a soft breeze. And as he looked down on the market below, he murmured, Although it is written on the sign, Do not pick the flowers, it is useless to the wind, for the wind cannot read. And as the days passed, little Rajman slipped easily into the Indian way of life. An indescribable peace had blossomed inside him 
since consulting his Maharaj bun, and yet at times, especially before sleep, the face of the little girl still haunted him. One hot bungal night, Rajban dreamt he was tumbling inside a kaleidoscope. Bright colours rushed by as he tried to cling to the sides. Wake up! Wake up, O oh master! It was Ellie, nudging him with her trunk. He awoke to a room of flurry with rose petals of the most fragrant variety, and one by one they settled softly on Rajban's head. And high on the wind he could hear a voice wailing, Rajban, oh Rajban, help me, please help me. It was the voice of the girl. The little Bumbry jumped to his feet and went to the window, and in the distance he could see the peaks of the Himalayas touched by a celestial light. A final gust of wind kissed his cheek with petals, then the voice died and the night fell dark. Come, Ellie, he said Rajban, I think it is time we met this Katman of Katmandu. For seven days and seven nights, Rajban plodded along the trunk road atop his trusty elephant. And through the valleys and the forests, he was driven on by the thought of the girl and the voice of his guru. Follow the divine light that prepares you for the fight. Ride Rajban into the night. Rajban and Ellie were completely alone amidst the endless spaces of heaven powdered with nightly stars. And night must fall. And he wondered at the mysterious darkness of the Himalayan mountains, the depths of the shadows, the remoteness of shapes, familiar by day from the plains, but which by now, at the approach of evening, took on sinister forms. Rajban, we can see you. Can you hear us? Rajban was stricken with fear by the terrifying sound of a hidden voice. Who is it, Ellie? said the frightened bunny. And then the voice came again. Can you hear us, Rajban? Your playing days for Bumbry are over. Catman has spoken. A blinding flash followed, and the little fellow was lifted clean off Ellie's back. His cricket bag was thrown to the ground, spilling its contents. And next thing he knew, Rajban was being driven by a stranger at high speed in a green Sahib turban. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie, he cried. But his pleas were in vain, and he was quickly gagged and blindfolded in the back of the car. It's no good you screaming. You will never see your Ellie again. I am Catman, and this is my henchman, Attila the Bun. We have great plans for you and our other special captives. Swiftly they sped deep into the purple caverns of the Himalayas. Behold, the car stopped and little Rajban's blindfold was removed, and before him stood a vast palace of gl glittering gold, ornamented with countless jewels, and set amid landscape gardens reflected in tranquil pools, a spectacle of unparalleled grandeur. Towering archways were intricately inlaid with great diamonds, sapphires and emeralds. Swarthy guards were stationed by the gates, resplendent with rubies, and tigers roamed at will. Feast your eyes, Rajban. Enjoy the splendours of my home, for this is the palace of the winds. Catman's evil roar reverberated around the walls, and Rajban's fear was mirrored in the tiger's eyes. Tomorrow I have plans for you, but first I think you would like to meet someone special. Guards, take him to the tower. Rajban was hustled up many stone steps until he arrived at a massive door. It opened and he was tossed into a cold room. Dim lamps shed a multicoloured glow. A small group of worshippers, some fair, some dark-skinned, chanted softly, sitting in a meditative posture around an old woman who lay very still. And there from the shadows appeared a figure who came towards Rajban and held his hand. And in the half-light of the room she removed her veil. Rajban's tummy fluttered as it had done that day in the market. It was Rose Patel. I knew you would come, said Rose softly. With great feeling, Rajban hugged the girl to his chest. She in turn caressed his cheek as her brown eyes welled with tears. Yes, princess, it is me. I have come, all is well. He listened carefully while Rose Patel told a story. The people of Kathmandu are terrified of my father. He lives in grandeur while they are paupers. Every month he sends his tigers into the town and demands their hard-earned money, which is brought here to pay for more jewels and gold for his palace. That night Rajban tossed and turned in his sleep. When morning came, the prisoners of the tower were rudely awoken by Catman's henchmen. Come, our master will see you, ordered the guards. As he was led through the corridors of the palace, Rajban could hear the howling of tigers outside, but strangely his heart was free of fear. 
During the night, as the icy Himalayan winds had rushed through the tower, his mind had leapt with possibilities. He had lost Ellie, but found his princess and her mother. A warm, comforting feeling had begun to pulsate within him. The voice of old Hoban echoed in his mind, Rajban, a Bunbury does his best, a Bunbury does his best. Stop your daydreaming, Rajban, for the time has come to put you to the test. The little bunny snapped out of his trance and looked up at a mighty throne. And there sat Catman, and next to him the sniggering Attila the Bun. My city is filled with rumour that you, as a Bunbury, are fearless. Is this a fact? inquired Catman. It is quite true, replied Rajbun, biting his lip. Then I challenge you to fight Rani, the largest tiger ever seen. If you can successfully defeat her, I will give you the hand of my daughter and the freedom of her wretched mother, plus a thousand rupees. But if you refuse to meet Rani in combat, I shall blazon your name throughout the land as an imposter and a coward. Catman's words struck Rajbun with a volley to the heart. He knew that Rani would combine the ferocity of a thousand fast bowlers, but his mind was made up. I accept, said Rajbun proudly, but on one condition. Yes, sneered Catman. I am all ears. Well, you said it, thought Rajbun, chuckling to himself. <laughs> that if I defeat Rani, the people of Kathmandu are given back all the money and riches you have robbed from them. In his excitement, Catman half rose from his chair and with a sadistic smile agreed, it's a deal. The contest will be set for a week, hence in the arena of the Temple of Gloom. Now take him to the tower. The news of Rajbun's impending fate spread all over India. The Delhi Mail and Bombay Bugle ran banner headlines. Rajbun fights Rani for princess's hand and rights of people. Bunbury to be hit for Sikhs. Indians bones in the Temple of Gloom. All that week, crowds from the city and the neighbouring hills bought tickets eagerly in response to the beat of drums announcing the new unique contest. See the Himalaya player, shouted the touts. When the big day of the battle arrived, thousands were turned away for lack of seats. Catman sent in his guards for Rajbun. Wait, said the little bunny. I do not need guards to take me to the area of the Temple of Gloom. Catman behaves like a Roman emperor who delights in setting... Christians to the beasts. I will come when I am ready. The guards, surprised by his composure, opened the door and obediently left Rajbun alone with his princess. And for that instant, the wind ceased and time stood still, and all the tigers in the universe could not have disturbed the loved ones. And tenderly, Rajbun gazed at Rose Patel in the half light of the room. Her face glowed, not a word was spoken, and then, If I do not return, my princess, try to make contact with old Holborn in England. Rose, I, I, and she touched his lips with her fingers. Don't say it, Rajbun, for I know. And for a tear-filled moment, they fell into each other's arms. Now, my warrior, you must go. And with that, the little bunny left her amidst the hubbub of a frenzied crowd. At the end of the arena, the tiger Rani, a mighty predator, prowled up and down in her cage. Then suddenly she leapt with a thunderous crash against the bars, sending forth her ferocious welcome to the little figure who now stood alone in the sand. The audience was hushed with pitiful fear as they watched little Rajbun walking towards the raging beast. Open the cage, cried Catman. Let the contest begin. In a trice, Rani was upon Rajbun, swiping him with a massive paw. She sent him spinning off balance. The tiger sensed blood and with a roar, she pounced towards the little bunny who managed to sidestep and jump onto her back. Raining blows on her head, Rajbun's attack had no effect. It only made Catman and her cronies howl with laughter. Rajbun, Rajbun, roared the crowd. As the beast sprang forward again, she caught Rajbun and sent him spiralling into the air. But he didn't land with a bump. Instead, there was a fanfare of hooting as Rajbun was caught in mid-descent. It was Ellie, charging into the ring, followed by a hundred elephants. The crowd went mad. So did Catman. You'll be sorry, Rajbun, he screamed. Here, master, take your bat. And still holding Rajbun firmly in her trunk, she lowered him towards the maddened beast. Whack! went Rajbun, hitting the tiger on the nose. Rani reeled back and leapt again, but each time Ellie lifted her master to safety before lowering him for another bat-wielding attack. The enraged tiger pounced once more, panting for the kill. But Rajbun and Ellie repelled her again and again. The brute's assaults grew in fury. The spectators trembled with excitement. Finish her, Rajbun, cried the crowd. Kill him, Rani, retorted Catman. 
So fast did Bunny and Beast move that it was impossible to take in the wonder of the contest. In a swirl of orange, black and grey, there was a massive bellowing as a final concussive blow was delivered. Who was the victor? The dust settled and the tiger collapsed and lay quietly, her jaws finally shut. Like a pussycat, shouted the crowd. And Raj Bun unraveled his turban and tied the tiger tight so she could not move. Rani was vanquished at last. Catman's pride had been humbled. The contest was won. Rajban was held aloft triumphantly by Ellie at the head of her elephant friends. Who's sorry now? sang the joyful spectators. Who's sorry now? But where was Catman? Look, Rajban, look, pointed the crowd. As the little bunny peered beyond the arena, he saw smoke. The palace was on fire. Catman had torched the tower. Like Quicksilver, Ellie and her chums went into action. Drawing water from the pools with their trunks, they hosed the raging inferno, but the winds from the mountains fanned the flames into a fierce ablaze. Rajban, Rajban, save us! Through the smoke, Rajban could see Rose Patel at the window, screaming and choking on the fumes. Ellie and her chums continued to hose furiously, but it was no good. The tower started to crumble. Quick, master, come to me, appealed Ellie, in a whirl and a twirl. Ellie entwined a trunk round Rajban and catapulted him to the ledge of the burning window. Meanwhile, the other elephants had pulled down an awning from the nearby bazaar and formed a circle holding the sheet. The smoke in the room was now suffocating. Jump, princess, jump, hollered Rajban. But my mother, pleaded Rose Patel. Leave it to me. Now jump, ordered Rajban firmly. Taking one last look at Rajban, Rose Patel jumped into the sheet below and little Rajban coughed and spluttered his way to the old woman's side and mustering one final reserve of strength, took her in his arms and leapt from the window. It was just as well, because with a terrible creaking, the tower finally collapsed into a million glowing fragments. As doctors tended Rose Patel's mother, Rajban listened carefully to Ellie. After you had been captured, I made contact with the Maharajban, who helped round up my friends. I believe he has also made a trunk call to India, <laughs> smart Ellie. By now, the crowd had jostled its way to Rajban's side. We salute you, Rajban. Today will be a public holiday in your honour. As Rajban and Rose Patel were presented with garlands and paraded through the streets, there came a sound from above, and there, glinting in the sun-filled sky, was a fast-moving object. Crowds stared in wonder as the machine twisted and turned and zoomed overhead. It was the Bunnymobile. And as it dipped and rolled in a victory salute, Rajban could just make out the pilot's features. There was Ian Buntham grinning and winking. Next in was Golden Hair Gower and behind sat Alan Ram and Graham Dilbunny and the rest of the lads. Oh, the Bumbries are here, cheered Rajbun and gave Rose Patel such a big hug she nearly fell off Ellie's back. The joyful procession accompanied by the Bunnymobile hovering above moved to the outskirts of the town and there under the shadow of the mountains the elephants lined trunk to tail and formed a boundary to watch the Bumbries play an exhibition game for the town's people and perched on the elephant's back, sheltering from the midday sun under pink parasols, the folk shouted their approval as Ellie joined in the game. Look at her! Ellie's better than a bowling machine, they laughed. And flanked by old Hoban and his Maharaj bun, little Raj bun held Rose Patel's hand. You, princess, are my jewel in the crown. Well, my lad, we're proud of you, beamed old Hoban, but I'm afraid there are many missions ahead and we must return to Bunbury. And what of you, my rose, said Rajbun with pain in his heart. Tearfully, the little princess spoke words which were foreign to her feelings. My Rajbun, we must be brave while we're apart. I will stay here with my mother and take care of the people of Kathmandu who need me. We must heal the suffering of a lifetime and make our town strong again. As Rajbun joined his Bunbury colleagues, the wise old Maharajbun put his arm around Rose Patel. My rose, it is written that your friend is your needs answered. He is your field, which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving, and he is your board and your fireside. For you come to him with your hunger, and you seek for him with a peace. When you part from your friend, Rose, you grieve not, for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence, as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. And as the Bunnimbul took off, Rose Patel could just make out little Rajbun. He was at the window, clutching a rose in his hand. That's it. Sad. Rose, uh, Rajman's story. There you are.